Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today is a very special day. You know, from time to time on the show, we've had some fantastic guest artists, but today it's my privilege to introduce you to absolutely my favorite guest artist. This is my son, Steve. He's a fantastic artist. He travels all over the country and he teaches literally thousands of people the joy of painting. Steve, welcome to our show. We're glad to have you here today. Thanks, Dan. Tell you what, I'm going to turn the show over to Steve, let him do a fantastic painting for you, and I'll see you soon. Steve's all yours, son. Thanks. Okay, uh, so far on the canvas, I've got a thin, even coat of liquid white, and uh, they'll be running your colors across the screen for you. Uh, I'm going to start off by using my two-inch brush, and maybe just a little bit of alizarin crimson. Just go into a tiny bit of the color at one time because you don't want to get too much on there. End up with your sky on fire. Just a little bit. Okay, and then right around in here. Well, we better call the fire trucks out now. It's like I almost got too much. We can always blend some of that out though. Maybe a little down here, like we're going to have some water later. Okay, and then you don't even have to clean your brush or anything. Just go into a little bit of Prussian blue. That's an even stronger color, so you want to use less of it. Just a little. And you see right up here where I'm putting these dark blue shapes is where I can lay some clouds in later. <clears throat> but just little X's everywhere. Just kind of let the shapes get smaller as you come towards the center. So start off like this and then turn it kind of horizontal. And maybe just a little bit more of that. Prussian blue with just a touch of sap green. and some straight horizontal strokes down here. The reason you want them straight is because you want to indicate the stillness and the flatness of the lake. If you had moving water, you could do it differently. <coughs> okay, something like that. And then you need to wash your brush out. So much for that pair of pants. And then you just blend the pink a little bit, like that. Try to get out all those little streaks, if you can. But at the same time, you're trying to leave a few little dark areas. And pretty much the same thing down here, but just straight. You don't want to blend out all those little horizontal lines. They kind of help. But only in the water. The sky should be soft and the water can be a little bit crisper. Okay, and then maybe this one will have a, a mountain in it and some clouds both. I'm going to start off with the mountain first, though, so I can bring some clouds around it. A little bit of Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown in equal parts and maybe a touch of midnight black and crimson in that too. And leave your color really dark. This is going to be one of those closer mountains. Okay, maybe right about in here somewhere. You can always change things if you want to, just make them a little bigger. Of course, you can get a little carried away with that. Probably have to nail another canvas on top of this one if you did. That's okay though, as long as you're having fun. 
once you get the basic shape in there, just kind of scrape away the excess paint. And uh, a lot of my students, while I'm traveling around teaching classes, will ask me, how come you leave that edge up there? Is that uh, necessary? And uh, I always tell them, well, yeah, if you're doing a, a foreground mountain, it is. But if you're doing one that's way off in the distance, you want those edges nice and soft. Okay, now that you got that part in, just pull it out a little bit with your big brush. Go with the angle of the mountain. Always down like this, and then over here, pull to the left. You're pretending each peak is split down the middle, and you're pulling to the left on the left-hand side, right on the right-hand side. And you can almost see impressions of highlights right away. And then blend out the bottom a little bit, make it soft. <clears throat> now I think I'm going to put a cloud in there. Just a little bit of liquid white on the fan brush. And then I'm going to go through some titanium white. Maybe even put a dot of bright red in there. Okay. Let's see, what about one right here? Just making little circles. And don't kill all your dark areas. They're real important. And if you lose some of your paint, just add some more. It's up to you, though. Some people don't like pink. Others of us do. I think uh, purple is probably my favorite color, because I like blue and red equally. Okay, something like that up there, and maybe a little one right in here. Could be anywhere. And then with the big brush, just blend a little. Only blending out the bottoms of the clouds, and I'm using the top corner of the brush. Just like that. Go over them a couple times real lightly. And maybe right over here. This cloud will shoot right over into the actual mountain itself. Only if you want it to, though. Right over the top of it, even. Don't be scared of these big brushes. Sometimes they seem like they're so large, they're just going to mess up everything. But in the long run, if you learn how to use them, you can get more accomplished at one time, and it looks even better than it does with a small brush. OK, now if you take a little bit of highlight color, which would be your titanium white with your bright red, just like that, get a nice roll on the knife, and come in here and put on a little bit of snow. Now make sure that when you're doing this, you don't push or anything on the knife. You want it to be a very gentle thing, almost like you're letting the bumps on the canvas just take the paint they need as you drag it down. Doesn't have to be thousands of peaks or anything either. A mountain many times will look better if you just do something simple on it. I find that most of the paintings I do, uh, if I try real hard on them, people look at them and they say, well, there's just, just overdone or too much. I think simplic simplicity is probably a little bit more important than you know trying to clutter up one. OK, and then a little bit of Prussian blue and white for shadow color. If you want to make your mountain look uh, even closer at this point, instead of just putting the blue on by itself, 
You could even take a little bit of the dark color that you used originally for the mountain and put that in behind it first and see what happens there. It gets really, really up front. Right behind the highlight is where you have shadows. So anywhere you see that bright white, just come in, put a little blue on there, right behind it. This is a huge mountain here. I'm going to just let you guess whether it got out of control on me or I meant to do it this way, though. Okay, back to the big brush one more time. Tap in at the bottom of the mountain just a little bit. This will be where we make a little mist in there. And lift up into that. <coughs> what you're trying to do is lift out the tap marks and diffuse the bottom of the mountain, make it look really uh, misty, like it falls right into the pitcher. That's southern talk there, pitcher. That's really what you pour, pour Kool-Aid out of, I guess. But Now, uh, down at the bottom of the mountain, we're probably going to want some foothills and things like that. You notice I always stand back a little bit and take a look at it to make sure that everything's going okay. Sometimes I tilt my head at different angles and stuff like that, too. A little bit of sap green and Van Dyke brown for this. And once you get a color mixed up there, you want to take a little bit of white put with it to lighten it up. Okay. Maybe we'll have some foothills that are kind of big, since we got a big mountain too. Seems like that would go together. All you have to do is keep the brush vertical, just bounce it right across there. Now you don't have to go with the same colors that I'm going with. I would on my first one, but as you paint several of them, you'll notice that sometimes your colors look even better. When I first started, I always used the same colors as Dad did. Now I use different ones. And some I like better and some I don't. Okay, now underneath that, if you go back with a big brush one more time and mist, did you ever notice that uh, while I'm doing everything in the painting, I'm always knocking off the bottom edge of it? And by doing that, that's how you make things uh, look further away. And you could even Put a little bit more of the same brown and sap green in that color to darken it down again. And come right maybe back in between a few of these and make it look like levels of foothills coming down. See, there you go. Now one thing that you want to be aware of right here, you don't want to knock out your whole lake. You could end up coming all the way down in here. You just want to do a little bit and stop. I think a lot of uh, being an artist or doing a painting has you know, something to do with what not to do as well as what to do. Because I have a habit of overdoing things. I'm going to do that much on that part and leave it alone. I just have to force myself to do that though. I always want to play with it a little more. <clears throat> okay, fan brush and a little bit of that same brown and sap green. This time we'll leave the white out. Okay. Maybe right here we'll have a pine tree. Just using the corner of the brush, the right hand corner only, if you're right handed. And as you get further and further down on the tree, you want to push in harder and use more of the brush. 
In other words, you start with the corner of it and then about half of it's used, then the whole thing down here. And from this pine tree, since you already got it in there, you could just pretend that there'll be a piece of land across there like that and kind of just smush it right in there. I think uh, for some of the people that I've taught to do this, what makes it difficult for them is they're trying to think so hard about uh, the artistic thing, about, oh, I, I just have to get this perfect, or you know things like that. The main thing is just to get some color on there. That's what I tell them, get some color on the canvas. That way you can work with it, and uh, maybe on the next step you can get what you're looking for, because it always looks better the more you do. That little guy there is just a baby. Okay. It's a nice idea to cut off the side of the painting over here, too. I usually like to do that. Kind of leads your eye towards the mountain more. Okay, so just something like that on those. And then if you take a one inch brush. You can come over here into some CAD yellow, pull through there, and we can make a few little bushes out of these. Now I don't use a ton of yellow by itself, but maybe we'll just have one bright yellow one right there. And if your paint won't stick, use a drop of thinner. A little bit more yellow, maybe this time with a touch of red in it make sort of an orangey color. What the heck, I'll put a red one right in the middle. There we go. And you want to remember while you're doing your paintings at home that just because you might not be, you know, totally happy with something, that doesn't mean that somebody else won't be. I find that the paintings I do that I dislike the most, people like the most. So you want to keep that in mind. A lot of fall colors today. Might as well go up and put a little bit of those same colors on the pine trees up there too. Almost forgot, we wouldn't want to forget something to hold those pine trees up, maybe a little Van Dyke brown and a roll on the knife. And you can just go in there and touch a couple times like that. And uh, maybe highlight with a little lighter color, white or light brown, it's up to you. And you can take the fan brush and highlight those with your same yellows. Or even touch a little green in it. Now you don't want too much highlight on your pine trees. That'll, that'll do you more pain than good on those. Gotta have those darks. That's probably one of the most important rules I ever learned is it takes dark to show light. Guess who taught me that? <laughs> okay. Maybe if you pull down a little bit of that green, you can get a reflection out of that. I just added a tiny bit on my one inch brush of that same green mother color that I'm using. And I'll show you a simple way to reflect color. Just take that same bush color that you used on the brush, pull down a little bit, maybe brighter here and there. And for that red one, a little red. Then you can just take your big brush back in there, pull down on it, wipe it off a little, and go right across that. Now underneath all this stuff, we're going to need something to hold it up. Uh, looks like land would probably do a good job, huh? Van Dyke Brown in pure form. 
And if you get a little roll on there, you can come up here and just kind of pull some of that across. And if you're going to angle it, angle it really far out to the right. I mean a really long incline. Stay away from pulling it straight down. That's a no-no. And if you use a little bit of brown and white together, that'll give you a highlight color. And just throw a little bit of that on there. I have a tendency to drag my fingernails down here through that. That's how flat you're holding the knife. That's a good indication. Maybe a little bit of grass on top of this with that one inch brush. Just like you made your bushes, just hold it on its side and push in. And try to make it look something like rose. And once again, if it's not sticking, you need more paint thinner in it. Let's get rid of those fingernail marks. There we go. Eraser mate brush. And while I got it in my hand, I can pull a reflection out of this land here. I try to do as much as I can with that same brush before I put it down. Okay, a little bit of liquid white on the knife. Spread that around real good. A little bit of blue with it, maybe. Any blue. And let's get a little tiny roll of that on the knife and go up here for a water line. Something like that. Just right underneath the edge of that land. Kind of pushing hard, trying to get it to come off the bottom of the knife. Let's go to the one inch brush and over here we might have a, a large something. Heck, I'm not even sure what it's going to be yet. No, you know, I'm just teasing you. It'll be a big pine tree. Make sure that top's skinny on it, no matter how wide it is. I usually just get the shape in first and then go back and darken it up. But you notice if you don't try real hard on something, a lot of times it does come out better. You know, more rough or realistic looking. I think our minds have a tendency to think uh, more logical and less artistic from all that school. See, now it's getting nice and full in there. Always keep it a little darker in the center, too. And then down here, maybe just a little bit of this kind of action. Better be real careful on this part, though. <laughs> Wouldn't want to mess up or anything. Okay, and then just like the other side, maybe a little trunk up there in that tree. Something like that. A little bit of brown and white on top of it for a highlight, just like that. If you don't like some of your trunk or you just want to, you know, diffuse some of it, you can go in and hit with that mother color a few times and it sets it right down in there. Let's see here. I drop a paint thinner and some cad yellow and a little bit of sap green and we'll be able to put some highlight on that tree. Highlighting is kind of a pattern you'll notice. Uh, as I come down here, I'm kind of going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. I kind of count it off in my head or sing a little song. Some people say middle, middle, side, side. 
And then down around here, maybe a little bit of bush action. Any old color you want. I like bright colors myself. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing these foreground bushes, I think to myself, well, you know, they should have a little bit more detail in them or something. But uh, I don't necessarily try to put any detail in them. But when I'm done with them, I put a little strip of land underneath that really helps a lot. The way you do that is just Van Dyke Brown, and you just pull it right in there. Just like that. Then a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and white on top of it, maybe. And there you go, there's some land. And as usual, a little grass on top of the land. Well, <clears throat> it looks like that about does it for this one today. Uh, I hope you've had a really good time watching the show, maybe even as much fun as I've had painting it for you. Uh, I'm going to leave this one unsigned for now because I'm running out of time, but uh, we'll see you next time.